Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Unknown Cameras. In this video we're going to be covering the Yasuhara T012. This is definitely one of the most rarest cameras that I will ever cover on this channel and the rarest I've ever owned to be honest. I think only about a couple hundred of these were made in the world. I think it was about three or five hundred copies if I do remember my research correctly. Definitely one of the weirdest cameras I've ever tested out and I've tested out a bunch of weird cameras but this camera not only is it weird, but it's really, really good, but weird at the same time. Usually weird cameras are really bad, but this camera is pretty solid. First, I'm going to start off by saying this camera has a flash on it, which is very strange. I've never seen that on a rangefinder camera before. Um, it has a LCD screen up top, or I guess a um, LED screen, I should say. I don't have batteries in this camera right now, so I can't show you what it looks like, but I can always insert footage later. It has a fixed lens on it, meaning you can't remove the lens and switch it to another one. It is a 30mm 2.8 lens, color Denor, whatever that means. Yeah, this lens is really, really good. Um, very, very sharp as you'll see in a bit. The only manual settings you get with this camera is the focus and the aperture. Um, it is an aperture priority camera, which means uh, based on your aperture, your shutter is selected. Yeah, I don't know how to explain things, I'm sorry. And of course, this is a 35mm camera, as you can see. Come on now, this is a film camera channel, not a digital, smidgetal, whatever you want to call it. And that is basically it about this camera so far. Uh, as you can see, it is pretty tiny. I could hide it behind my hand, really. It's a lot smaller than my phone, very compact and very lightweight. The story behind this camera and how I got it is I bought a lot of cameras, as in a lot, as in a box full of film cameras, once for I think $30. After I bought the $30 box of cameras, um, right before I left, the lady actually remembered that she had one more camera in her room. I just banged this on my desk. She had one more camera in her room and she ran to go get it. She brought it out, handed this to me and said only 50 of these were made in the world. I'll give it to you for 50 bucks. To which I said, sure, I'll take it. So I gave her the extra 50 bucks for this thing because why not? I was a little bit worried about buying this camera. Uh, first of all, I don't know if it worked because I don't have a battery to test it. Second of all, it was a bit in rough condition. I know it looks pretty clean now, but it was uh, pretty rough. This lens cap was taped with scotch tape onto the camera which I had to do um, a lot of cleaning to do. The scotch tape left a lot of residue on the lens itself. Secondly, I noticed I was missing a uh, strap socket here, whatever you want to call it. It's here on this side but not on this side which is a little bit of knowing I can't really use a strap with this camera. But other than that, the camera looked somewhat fine to me so I just said, you know what, screw it. Only 50 of these remain. Sure, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Why not? Later that day, I did some research on this camera and found out that only several hundred of these were made. Not 50. Several hundred. Which is still pretty rare, in my opinion. But after putting a battery in it and cleaning it a little bit, or a lot of bit, I realized that this camera did work. Except for the flash. Yes, the onboard flash on this camera does not work, unfortunately. Um, don't know what to do to get it fixed. I have a bunch of cameras that need their flashes fixed, but that's a that's another topic for another video. This camera is actually so rare that I actually want to go in depth on how this thing works. So again, this is a Yasuhara T012. It is a 35 millimeter rangefinder camera. To turn the camera on, you will flip a switch near the shutter button. So the number you see on the blue screen is actually your shutter speed. Right now, it is at a thirtieth of a second. So you open up the camera normally, you just pull up on the rewind lever and you open the back door. As you can see the interior to this camera is very, very clean. Now over here you can flip it to AEL mode. This is how you lock your shutter speed and you're able to change your aperture. So as you can see here the aperture ring is on the lens, it ranges from 2.8 to f22. Here we have a program mode and then a flash mode. This front dial on the front of the camera right next to the lens extra controls what mode you can shoot on. Here we have self timer, shutter, and bulb. Now over here you have your ISO dial, 
it ranges from ISO 25 to ISO 1600. Now right over here you have your focus ring. It ranges from 0.6 meters to 7 meters to infinity. So I'm now going to load a roll of triax into this camera and try to take some photos. Bad photos. So this camera in design is very unique in my opinion. I do like this whole uh, design on top of the camera. You know the LED screen with the T012 and the Japanese writing or whatever writing that is. So now that you know how this camera works, I'm very excited to show you the photos I got with it. I did shoot this thing about a year ago in December of 2020 in New York City. Here's a clip. So that is pretty much it, the video on the Yasuhara T012. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Um, have you ever heard of it? Have you ever seen it? Would you ever buy one? Uh, these things are actually pretty pricey on eBay, at least the working condition ones. I think they go, last time I checked, I think they go for about 1200 bucks for a camera this small. Yeah, um, obviously I won't be able to sell this because of its condition, but it's definitely, definitely a good camera to have in my arsenal. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go buy more Kodak branded stuff. Till next time.